I don't think anyone else has done that in the marathon event. So it was a nice way to finish my career. And I went over and just behind the media guys was Tanya and, and our children. And behind them was mum and dad. So Athletics Australia, realising I was having this famous last run, got mum and dad from out of their seats and brought them down so they'd be right there on the finish line. So 15 years of planning, I turn, I give a wave to mum and dad up in the seats. They weren't even there. So I suppose in life you can meticulously plan a lot of things, but some things are just out of your control. So was anyone in the stadium that night sitting under the cauldron by any chance? Gave a wave to you and make me feel a bit better. But anyway, that's the, that's the experiences you have. And then obviously, you know, I retired and retired from international competition, but I've kept running. And, you know, it's just what I do. I don't kind of think of it as, as my job. It's just running's just something I do um, as a part, as a way of life. So I've continued to run and I actually went to a world cross country, won a national cross country title and went to a world cross country. And, and um, you know, I've ran some, a lot of races subsequent to that where I've ran some city to surfs, you know, running with a microphone and, and then I, I was up here in July, I think I was in Queensland three weekends out of four for the Gold Coast Marathon, the um, Jetty to Jetty Fun Run at Red Cliffs and then the um, Ipswich Park to Park. So that's a lot of what I do now and I commentate on different events and I suppose what that's done is it's kept my brand recognition high. So wherever I go around Australia, you know, Montegetti, it's a bit of an unusual name, so it's hard to spell, but apart from that, people recognise your name. So, you know, I'll turn up somewhere and people go, oh, you're that marathon runner. So that brand recognition's been really important because it obviously keeps me in the loop, keeps sponsors interested. As I say, I've st even in retirement, I've still got sponsors who have stayed on board. So my name's been able to um, stay at quite a high level and it's allowed me to what I say is not work. You know, what I do is, is something that I enjoy. It's a passion for me, so I enjoy the role that I've been able to have. Sometimes it costs you money, and it's a funny thing. Out of the, I ran 22 marathons in my life, 12 of them were championship events. So four Olympic Games, three Commonwealth Games marathons, and five world championships. So those 12 marathons that I ran, they were for no money at all. No prize money, no appearance money, nothing. The other 10 marathons that I ran were city marathons that I got paid for. So in 15 years, I only had 10 paydays. It's not a very good, not a very good job prospect, that one really is. It? So you're under pressure, you know, you've got to run well. If you, if you pull out of a marathon, no payday for 12 months. So, you know, there's an expectation that you would run well. Luckily for me, you know, I finished all of those marathons and was able to eke out a career. Now, what happens if you do go well in things like Commonwealth Games and Olympic Games? Even though you don't get paid directly from that event, obviously your name, you, the brand recognition stays high. Sponsors want to be involved. The next race you go to, you get a higher appearance money. So at the end of the day, I might not be making money from them directly or, or being able to make a life career out of it, but it, the, the benefits of it down the track are worthwhile. And that's why people get those, um, do those events and get that recognition. So it's also competing against the best in the world in, in a fair environment. And sometimes you won't get that in other, in other sporting competitions. Um, so for me, I think that the key that I like to remember is out of those 22 marathons, I had a very long career, over 15 years. So I started in, in 86 and went sort of straight to being one of the better marathon runners. And at, in retiring at 2000, finishing 10th at the Olympic Games, I had a very long career. So I'll be rem remembered for my longevity. And yet, what I like to think about is that longevity was only as a result of that four tenths of a second that I got under the qualifying time in that race in, in Melbourne in 1986. I didn't think of it at the time, it didn't seem that important. I've just kicked down the front straight, crossed the finish line and just snuck under that qualifying time. Yet that opened the door to so many opportunities. And off I went to the World Championship, you know, ran the marathon at the Commonwealth Games, went to the World Championships, went to the Olympics. Suddenly I had this career as a world-class marathon runner from that little opportunity. Okay, so I always think, God, the small decisions you make today, you know, maybe turning up here, you know, networking last night, networking today, getting a brochure from outside, those sorts of things, the consequences could be felt 15 years down the track. I'm a living, breathing example of that having happened. So you can't, you cannot deny that some of those small decisions you make today, consequences can't be experienced later on because it's a true story. And I often think of that. Give people respect 
Make sure who, people you're talking to, no matter where they come from. I mean, the guy that drove me in last night from the airport, driving taxis, he's just had his farm, because of the drought up here in Queensland, he's had his farm repossessed, he's driving taxis. He talks to a guy from India about a, an invention that he's got. He might end up you know, making, making a lot of money from that connection. So you just never know, people that you meet and people you talk to can be, play a significant part in your life. We have a lot of technology now, and I know, you know, we're all on our Blackberries and iPhones, and, you know, we're worried now, God, who's sending me messages? You've got to get out of here because there could be a really important message on my iPhone waiting for me. I tell you, there's more important messages in this room by talking, by talking to each other. And it's, I think it's that art of communication that we're losing that's such an important tool, especially in your environment. You know, your communication skills, if you've got the knowledge in here, it's of no value in there. It has to get out there. Okay, so it's a really important thing that you have the ability to communicate and engage the people that you're talking to. Okay, just, um, I, I, have a, I have a slightly different view on leadership and we talk about leadership and your leaders within your field. Anthony will know this, on Sunday mornings I have a running pack in Ballarat that, you know, there's can be two, three of us, there can be up to 20 of us that go for a run out in the forest. Now I don't have a set path, so we don't kind of run a set group, you know, for an hour and a half and come back. What we do is we turn up there at 8.30, anyone that turns up, so if you're in Ballarat, you turn up at the Water Towers at 8.30 on a Sunday morning, you can come for a run with us. So I'm the leader of that group. So what we do is off we go, set off in the forest and we run along. Now I'm a bit older and getting a bit slower, as you can appreciate, so there's some young bucks in the group, some people who want to take off. So we're running along in the forest and I, I'm with a group couple of guys take off up the front and they get 100 metres ahead of us. We come to a T intersection and they sort of think, oh, well, we know where we're going, so off they go to the left. And of course I get to that T intersection, what do I do? I go right, naturally. I wasn't even going to go right, but because they went left, I'm going to go right. So we run along and we're 100 metres ahead all of a sudden. So they sprint up to us and catch up and again they off they go ahead. We get to the next T intersection, I go the, the opposite direction again. And eventually they start working this out and so they just jog on the spot when they get to the T intersection because they know that I'm going to go the opposite way to what they go. So, but the, the moral of the story is that I have this group we start off on our journey, we run for an hour and a half in the forest, we run about 20, 21 k's, we come back and it's important that I get every one of that group back. So firstly, to be a leader you need a team, you need other people in the event. Okay, so if I'm the only one running in the forest, of course I'm the leader, I'm the winner. I'm all of the, the things that we think about with success because I'm the only one there. But it's, it's a, pretty hollow, a pretty hollow victory. Okay, whereas when you've got a team of people, leadership is not often the person who's out in front. I'm never winning on that Sunday morning run. I'm never up the front. Okay, so I'm not winning, I'm not leading, I'm not getting a, a medal for finishing, and yet I'm the leader of that group because I control that team of people. We go on our journey and we arrive back safely after that hour and a half run. Now that's true leadership. Okay, you don't have to be out in front. In fact, it's not being out in front that's true leadership. Okay, it's taking that group of people on a journey with you and you know you started in a position at, at the end of that journey you've improved uh, those people's lives, life experience and that's I think you know is a pretty good analogy. Um, I, I was a chef to mission of the Commonwealth Games team obviously as you know and it was a magnificent experience for me just in my own personal development. It's a voluntary role, it's not, you don't have a job description, I can tell you that. They, they asked me if I wanted to do it about 18 months ago and as I say, I, I've come through, I was a liaison officer for Manchester, so I've been involved with seven Commonwealth Games in a row, four as an athlete, then I was a liaison officer in Manchester, then I was the mayor of the village in Melbourne, 2006, and then this time the chef de mission of the team. And it's a very responsible position. I thought, how good is this? I just go off and watch a bit of sport. Great. Wasn't quite like that, I can tell you. My God, you know, I had people management. You know, most of the time I was getting dragged back from sporting events because I had to do a, a disciplinary role with some of the athletes within our team. And Don's here, he knows what I'm talking about. But um, so that's part of it. And then I'd be fronting a media conference. And God, I used to love going to press conferences. How good was it going to press conferences? Because they'd, they'd go, Steve, gee, you're running well, great result. How'd you feel about the run? Well, this time they're going, Steve, why are we here? No athletes are coming. Commonwealth Games is a disaster. And I'm thinking, God, what's all this about? So I was getting 
uh, you know, I had to take a positive role, as I mentioned, the way you deal with the press. So it was great for my um, public relations, just knowing how to deal with um, the press. The political implications, you know, we met the Prime Minister when we got back here, we were dealing with the High Commission regularly getting security updates on what was happening over there, a lot of stuff that you don't know about that was happening behind the scenes. And at the end of the day, we took 420 Australians from here over to Delhi. They performed, did their role, did the job and came back and we arrived back home in Australia. Those 420 people arrived back here safely. So at the end of the day, we successfully um, did the, the task that we were assigned. And that's a very fulfilling thing to do. And it's not about me, it's hopefully allowing those athletes and, and um, officials the opportunity to have a life experience that's a positive one for them and, and you return them home in one piece. Um, you know, the washing machine, I'm, I'm not sure about, um, I was in bed when the washing machine got pushed off the, the eighth floor of